Hello guys, in this video I'll show you how you can create these kinds of quick, detailed sci-fi panels, or just any panels in general. So actually, now to look at this, this looks vaguely like a little uh, little cat right here. In fact, if I move the uh, the symmetry, it now looks like a like a cat face. Look at that. Anyways, the way I start is I start with this piece right here. If we take a look at the history, you can see start off as a plane as usual. Just did some basic extrusions and movements, inserted loops, move these edges up, symmetry, turbo smooth. It's important to realize that if you want the panels to flow a certain way, you can make some simple changes right here. For example, by selecting these two vertices and connecting them, I now get the panels flowing this way. It's possible to do this afterwards, but you can kind of make your job easier. If you want the panels to flow a certain way, just select vertices and connect them, and you will get a certain direction right away. All right, same here, for example, that creates a nice curve right here as well. Or like that. All right, so in order to start creating panels, you need to establish a good amount of curvature. So one may be too simple. Reason for this guys is because the way polygons work is that in order to get smoothness right here when you subdivide, you need to have these two polygons selected or touching. If you select this and you detach this for example, it's no longer going to have the curve because you've cut off what it needs to have the curve. So when I turbo smooth this right now, what you're going to notice is that it's no longer smoothing, it's now kind of angular right here, as you can see. So in order to get a good amount of smoothness here, you need to make sure that you start off with a good number of subdivisions. So one is definitely too simple. Two is a good number, perhaps three. And this all depends on how complex you want your panels to be. So let's go ahead and go with something like two. All right, now I can apply the poly on top and I'm going to, for example, delete the left half. All right, now we can do this one of two ways. We can select edges and we can use chamfer and we can simply use that to denote where the panel lines will be. And we can just hold down control double click to keep selecting that, something like this. Then we can chamfer to get that. Then we can select all these inner edges simply holding down control and double clicking. And I'm going to deselect these outer edges here. And we can simply apply a push modifier to push it inwards and get these kinds of panel line details. All right, but what I'm going to do is first I'm going to just plan out where I want the panels to be. So let's say right here. And then we can maybe select this base constraints, kind of move it like that. And we can detach this as a clone. I'm going to select that new object and give it a darker object color just to see, just to differentiate it right here. All right, here is our first panel. And so we can continue. All right. I'm going to apply shell on this as well. And if you saw my previous video, guys, one way we can get much more interesting details is just to go here to the top viewport. And just to create a basic spline right here. So let's see what we can create here. We'll go something like that. We'll select everything and we'll make it a corner. And we'll do something like that. All right. Now I can move it right next to this. And I can select this shell. Make sure bevel edges is turned on here. And then left click on this and select this one and as you can see right away it just adds a lot of really nice complexity to the panel so this is a great way to right off the bat get some nice complexity symmetry right away you can do some basic things like selecting and extruding and that gives us a nice kind of starting point
You notice we get some sharpness there, but what I like to do is just to use set flow on that to mitigate that. So set flow is extremely useful for that kind of thing. And then you can just kind of use topology, the existing topology to quickly, you know, extrude, bevel, just get some uh, starting details. Boop, boop. Got some nice little details here. Once again, select that, deselect this, and several iterations of set flow. And you've got a much better detail there. You can also, for example, go into loops and then loop tools and use a little bit of center for that as well. Sometimes all you need to do to get some cool details is just to kind of move things out a little bit here and get a little bit of that. All right. So next, let's plan out where we want our next panel line to be. So I'm just kind of thinking, you know, how do we want it to go? So a lot of times you see me working rather quickly, but it is a good idea to always take some time to plan things out. Let's select all this, for example. Let's see, sometimes you get some nice little accidents like this. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Okay, that looks a little bit awkward here. So let's try using face constraints. And let's try moving some of this into position, kind of like that. So using shift right here under freeform, using shift along with face constraint is a great way to quickly get the kind of panel lines you want, the shape that you want. So as you can see guys, in these videos, I'm kind of building upon the previous video. So you already saw the video hopefully on constraints and this just nicely builds on top of that. So you can see we kind of got this. So normally I can take some more time to plan things out, but let's go with this. Let's shell. Let's select that same, that same spline right over here and let's bevel that. We can also scale the spline. It's not gonna change anything. It's only when you go into the logic level and scale this, for example, that things will change. But we can go ahead and scale this just to make it easier to select. All right. So we're just building upon multiple videos now. And so right away, we've got this, this nice complexity happening here. All right, we're going to symmetry. We're going to turbo smooth that. Right, we're going to select this. We're going to turbo smooth that as well. And remember, guys, we always want our objects to work together. So because we've got this, this is a prime opportunity for us to do something with this as well. So I'm going to press F3 just so I can see where the polygons are here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and select these and edge constraints move this down and select that and scale it together. We can go ahead and use perhaps uh, make planer to flatten this out. Maybe a little bit of uh, inset there. So you can very easily get quick details here. Maybe I want that to be a little bit softer. All right. So in order to make this look smoother, guys, we can just go into line here and just uh, turn down interpolation. And then once you subdivide this, it becomes a lot smoother here.
This right here is an example of a happy accident. You can see what happened is I selected these edges and I pushed them in too far. And so what's happening is that the edges on the inside are coming out here, but it creates this nice darkness here. So I would need to fix it up, but you can see how I've got this inspiration here. So I probably would need to do this a different way. So let's see. Alright guys, I think we've got some really cool impressive details here, we've got a really nice color scheme going here. A couple of things you can do is just to further add some details to these pipes here. And it can be something as simple as just scaling them a little bit in some situations, some parts, and just adding a couple of loops through here. You know, that, that creates something cool right there. And then sometimes guys just doing a little bit of extrusion, a little bit of scaling can also be just a little bit of extra detail that you need you know, something like that and uh, there you go guys thank you for watching and take care